let's get into it. Today I had a chance to visit one of the most incredible places on the planet, the Lockheed Martin F-35 factory located in Fort Worth. It's over a mile long, 200 plus F-35s are being built simultaneously and it is producing one almost every other day. While I was at the factory, I had a chance to talk with three of the top people in the world. The first is Brick Wilson, who is the chief Lockheed test pilot. He's flown everything from the MiG-15 to the U-2 to the F-18, and now all three variants of the F-35. So I think the first question I have that everybody wants to know is, how do the different aircraft fly compared to each other? To be honest with you, Hazard, you know, when that canopy comes down, it's, it's really imperceptible, right? It's, yeah, you notice a couple of minor differences, but really the big difference is when I hit the button over here on the left, whether it's putting the hook down or converting to Stovall in the B model, really that's the biggest difference. And then of course the amount of uh, fuel it carries. So, you know, you get a bit, little bit better uh, ride quality in the air with the C model, but really performance wise, it's the same. Do you ever have to remind yourself what jet you're flying? Because the only other pilot that I know who's flown all three is single Hamilton. So <laughs> he's, he's, so do you have to, you know, tell yourself, put a sticky note on the dashboard? It, yeah, no, you know, not so much put a st sticky note, but I do have to remind myself. I was in a, a brief a couple of weeks ago and I was getting ready to go fly a B model uh, and I hadn't hopped in a B model in a while. So, you know, going through the standard brief, I'm like, okay, so I have an aborted takeoff, you know, I do have the hook as an option and my wingman's like, no, you don't, dude. <laughs> so you, you do have to kind of remind yourself, okay, what, what's the takeoff and landing parameters and, you know, what are my capabilities? We, like you said, we're, we're flying all three variants here, so it, it, it kind of gets routine. What's the B model like? I know I've heard horror stories from people uh, on the Harrier being able to hover and land that thing, but I hear the F-35 is a lot easier to do that. So don't let the Harrier community fool you. This jet is easy to hover, okay? As a matter of fact, almost no airmanship is required. I can hit three buttons and be in a stable hover, okay? So the first one is the conversion to, uh, to Stovall mode, you, the whole transformer thing, the doors open and whatnot. I can auto decel uh, to zero knots ground. I can even uh, tell the jet that I want to achieve zero knots at a specific waypoint. Wow. So it's either you know a little bit of airmanship or hey, I want to be zero knots at this waypoint. And then it has a, a mode called TRC, which will compensate for any crosswinds, any headwinds, and hold the aircraft stable uh, over a position on the earth. Well, same thing with the, the carrier. So we were talking before, my brother flies the F-18, so they spend a lot of time learning how to land. I see that in the submenu, the J-PALS, and I hear you know, it makes it pretty easy to land on the carrier now. Right. And I know you were the first person ever to land an F-35 on the carrier. So what was that like? It's still, uh, get your adrenaline going. At the end of the day, it's about you know making it safer for the pilot, and then there's there's other benefits that can be realized by doing that, right? So maybe the you know the squadrons don't have to spend as much time preparing for the boat as they used to, which means they can spend more time airborne, spend more fuel on those tactical scenarios, and and make a better fighter pilot. Pretty soon you're gonna be like the Air Force. <laughs> Let's not get crazy now. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> What are some of the biggest misconceptions that you see with the F-35? The list is long, right? <laughs> yeah, the list is long. So let, let's first start off with the F-35 is not maneuverable. I, I thought that Lockheed had put that to bed or laid that to rest with the Paris Air Show. Uh, this aircraft has the best of both worlds. It has high alpha capability, up to 50 alpha, and has a, a strong thrust to weight ratio as well. So. You know, in the, in the visual arena, whether we're fighting one circle or two circle fights, you know, the, the pilot has multiple tools that he or she can use to solve that problem. So not only is the F-35 a, a fighter, right? It can also be a fantastic uh, ISR platform. The, the capability to bring in all that inf information and then share it, not only with the individuals on the battlefield, but, you know, the uh, decision makers that are behind the lines as well. Yeah, agreed. I think every current fighter pilot who's flown with the F-35 values it. You know, there's going to be, you know, the initial fighter pilot right, teasing. Right, right. But I don't know of a single one that does not value flying with it. Because those fortune fighters are going to be with us till at least the late 2040s. And so we can provide situational awareness to them and make them more lethal. And what fighter right. pilot doesn't want to be more lethal? Exactly. Next, I had a chance to talk with Santi Boldness, who served as the chief F-35 engineer. So how difficult was it? I can only imagine uh, having to design a supersonic 
stealth fighter with the most situational awareness, most advanced avionics, and you also have to make that hover. Well, we did the X-35 program because a lot of people were wondering, can you really hover and land a 40,000 pound airplane? Um, with our shaft-driven lift fan, we just basically took a forward fuel tank out, put a lift fan you know, in the front, it's driven by the engine, and that configuration has turned out to be really good. Uh, when you look at the challenges, there's a lot of control system challenges because normally you're used to using surfaces as control effectors. Here you're using you know, the uh, thrust from the engine, you know, shifting the forward and the rear balance, the left and right with the roll post and wings, and that brought a lot of control system challenges early on. But as you progress, we, you could easily see that early on we got it to work, and then you could just see the refinement over time. So today, I'm not a pilot, but I bet I could probably land a Stovall airplane with the nose wheel right on the line. And that's because of the automation that we've been able to put into this jet. Yeah, the flight controls are bulletproof on this thing. Having flown the F-16, which I know you were instrumental in developing the flight controls on that, coming into land, it was almost impossible to do a perfect landing in the F-16 just because you got into a pilot-induced oscillation in-game, but the F-35 is really smooth. So what improvements have you taken from the F-16 to the F-35? So the F-16 was the first fly-by-wire airplane, so you had computers where they were hooked up to the surfaces with nothing but you know, wires. There was no hard cable, no mechanical linkages. Um, that let us use the software to shape how that airplane flies. On the F-35, we have a more advanced control system where we actually have the aerodynamic uh, control power in a model in the airplane. So while you're flying it, the computer is real-time calculating the optimal position for the surfaces, and that's how you get the really you know, uh, high-quality control laws because you're not just having a fixed gain schedule, you're actually optimizing while you're flying. Yeah, it's incredible fighting BFM, basic fighter maneuvers, dog fighting in this thing. I've seen the controls doing all kinds of funky things going in opposite directions for the stabs, and there's no speed brake on there, so how did that design process evolve? Well, we had a speed brake on the X-35, so we were learning what is a good way to slow a plane down, because you make this plane slick, so it'll accelerate good and go fast, um, but you have to slow it down. And what we realized is that adding an extra surface wasn't needed. Uh, we could actually mix with these advanced control laws the way we move the surfaces to actually drag up the airplane and slow it down. So without the weight or the cost or the reliability hit of having an extra speed brake surface, we were able to implement a speed brake function just with all the surfaces on the jet. And it's amazing that you were working on the X-35 program. That was back in the 90s when, when that came up. So what has that been like to see that evolve from that into this with you know probably hundreds of F-35s right here? Okay, every time I look at that, I am so proud. Um, I started from the beginning and I watched the maturation. I've gotten, I've had the opportunity to work flight controls, mission systems, I've worked with our structures teams, I'm now leading the engineering team, and just watching the journey and looking at the outcome of this jet and what we've been able to create, I'm just very proud of it. And I am, you know, just very happy that I had the opportunity to do this as probably the world's best engineering career. What do you think is one thing that is, I suppose, misunderstood about the, the aircraft from your perspective? Okay, I, you know, a lot of folks think it's a very expensive airplane. Here's the way I look at it. We design one family of airplanes. They have common avionics. They have common subsystems. So the advantage of this airplane is on a legacy jet, if you needed to redesign a radar for obsolescence or get new capability, you would have to pay the hardware and the software development for that. And then you'd have to do it for the other variant or the other aircraft for the other service and the other. Here, you design it once and everybody takes advantage of it. So the, the beauty of this airplane is the fact that we have common electronics, common software, is over the years, it will really drive down the cost when you compare it to maintaining a disparate fleet of aircraft as we currently have today. I'm a Cuban immigrant born in Cuba, left for because communism, my family went through all sorts of hell. And the fact that I get to do this for my country, I don't get to wear the uniform you do, sir, but this is my way to contribute. Well, thank so you. So for me, this is really personal. And lastly, I had a chance to interview Don Kiner, who served as the director of F-35 production engineering, which means he designed this factory around me. Not only that, but he's in his 36th year at Lockheed. He helped design the Raptor line, the F-22 line, and bring those lessons learned here. What are some changes from the Raptor production to what we've done here? Oh my gosh. Uh, that was really the biggest change in my career because the Raptor, was not a digital airplane. It was not a model-based airplane. Uh, we started with, uh, you know, CAD. We were using CAD, but we didn't make 3D solid models of everything. Uh, we didn't, uh, you know, we were 
We started with a 486 processor speed on the F22, and, and now I look at what's happened to technology. So looking back, what is the hardest engineering challenge that you had to fix? I would say the hardest engineering challenge is real easy. Uh, the first three years of the program that I worked was all new engineering, you know, three different variants, uh, uh, three different sets of tooling, uh, getting the engineering right, getting it out, getting it in, getting it built. Lessons learned are difficult to capture. They're difficult to, to, uh, to implement because people don't like to talk about failures. They only talk about it, like to talk about successes. Mm -hmm. Well, programs and functions are the same way. But, but you still have to have some knowledge of what is it. If, if you don't learn history, you're doomed to repeat it. That's certainly true in airplane business every bit as much as life. Yeah, that's, that's what we emphasize flying fighters is the debrief and it can be painful and it could be many hours, but that's where you capture the lessons learned and that's how you get better as a fighter pilot. So you, it feels real seamless when you're in smooth, it. Smooth, smooth. Like yeah. the F-16, you could not land the F-16 smoothly. It was easy to land, but you always kind of banged it on. Yeah. And if you looked out front, you'd see the leading edge uh, flaps. They'd be like twitching. Yeah. And you get into kind of a pilot-induced oscillation where you'd be fighting those things.